Alright guys, so in the last video we looked at solving um, two variable quadratic inequalities. So there were problems that had an x and a y in them. And we also need to look at how to solve one variable quadratic inequalities. Things look like number 35 here. Um, so notice that there are no y's in this. We're just looking at seeing where is it less than or equal to zero. Um, so the idea here um, is we're going to try to find the x-intercepts. And that's really all we're going to care about. Uh, so I don't care about the vertex, I don't care about the y-intercept. Um, all I care about is the x-intercepts and kind of knowing does the graph open up or down. Um, so to find the x-intercepts, recall that we need to factor this. I'll factor as x minus 8 and x plus 3. So I would have an x-intercept at 8 from this solution, and I'd have one at negative 3 from this part. Okay. So what I know then, here's negative 3, here's 8. So my graph's going to cross the x-axis at those two points. And then I know that since it's positive in the front, it's going to open upward. So my graph's going to do something roughly like this. My quadrant's going to open up. It's going to cross the x-axis at negative 3 and positive 8. Um, and then I don't really know where the vertex is. I don't know where the y-intercept is. I don't really care where those things are, though, because all I'm concerned with is seeing where is this graph less than or equal to zero. So um, if you're thinking about this as a graph, our y-axis would roughly be somewhere in here. Um, so we're concerned with where is this less than or equal to zero. In other words, where is it below um, the x-axis? So this line here, the x-axis, that's the equation y equals 0. We're looking at where is it less than or equal to this line. Where is it below this? And we can see that it's below it um, in this section of the graph. So in other words, between negative 3 and positive 8, we are negative. We are below. We are less than 0. Um, from negative 3 to negative infinity, going this direction, we are above and from 8 to infinity, we're also above. So if you're looking for less than or equal to, that would be the part of the graph that goes from negative 3 up to positive 8. So if you were graphing this as a number line, uh, the equal to part tells you that you have closed circles. And again, it's negative between the two, so you're going to shade between. Uh, we could also write this in interval notation since it's closed circles, you would use square brackets and say that our solution set would be the numbers between negative 3 and 8, including negative 3 and including 8. Okay? Let's do a couple more of these so you can kind of piece together what I'm doing here. Um, so the next one we have is x squared minus 14 is greater than or equal to 2. So notice in this one, we already had it set equal to 0. So I want to do the same thing here. I want to get this set equal to 0 first by subtracting 2. Okay, and then I want to try to factor it and find the x-intercept. So we have a difference of two squares here. That'll factor as x plus 4 and x minus 4. So in other words, I'll have x-intercepts at positive 4 from this one and negative 4 from this one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So my graph's going to cross at positive four and negative four. And again, it's positive in the front, so my graph's going to open upward. So I would do something roughly like this. Okay. But this case, I was looking for where is it greater than or equal to zero. So notice that between negative 4 and 4, my graph is below the axis. In other words, in, in other words it's negative there. So think about on a number line. It's negative between. Um, from negative 4 on to negative infinity, it's above. It's positive. And from 4 to infinity, it's positive. Okay? So I was looking for where is it positive at? Where is it greater than or equal to 0? Well, from negative infinity to negative 4. 
since it's equal to, I used a square bracket there. And then from 4 up to infinity. And my solution will be the union of those two sets. And again, you can graph this on a number line kind of the same way. Um, since it's equal to, you would use a closed circle, shading towards the positive part. Again, a closed circle, and we're shading the positive part. So remember that greater than zero is positive. Less than zero, you're looking to see where is it negative at. Okay, let me do one more with you. Um, let's try 43. I think this is a good one. Um, so we have 5x squared minus 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to zero. So this is a good example here. Uh, because you won't always have nice things that factor. Um, recall that there are other ways for you to find the x-intercepts. Um, so one way that we can do it is by using the quadratic formula. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, so in this case, b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a so I get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root well 4 times 5 is 20 times negative 1 will be negative 20 so if I'm subtracting there 4 minus a negative 20 would be the same thing as 4 plus 20, which would be 24, all over 10. Uh, recall that 24 is 4 times 6, and I know that the square root of 4 is 2, but I don't know the square root of 6, so I'm going to leave that part alone. And then 2, 2, and 10 are all even. Oops. So I can divide them all by 2. And I get that my x-intercepts are at 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 10. Um, so I have two of them there, a plus 1 and a minus 1. So my x-intercepts would be at 1 plus the square root of 6 over 10 and 1 minus the square root of 6 over 10. Um, so then here I need to kind of know uh, which one of these numbers is bigger. So if you have 1 plus something, it's going to get bigger, and then you're dividing it by 10, versus 1 minus something, that's going to get smaller. So this is my smaller number here. So if I was going to put this on a graph, um, I know that the square root of 6 is bigger than 1, because uh, the square root of 4 is 2. Um, so this part's going to be negative. Um, I don't really know where on the graph it's going to go, but I'm going to label this as 1 minus the square root of 6 over 10. I can make it so you can see this also. Um, and then 1 plus is going to be positive. So um, we'll call this 1 plus the square root of 6 over 10. Okay. And then notice that my graph was positive in the front, so it's going to open upward. Do something like this. Again, I don't really care where the vertex is. I don't care where the y-intercept is. I just care where the x-intercepts are. Um, and I was looking for the part that's greater than or equal to zero. So the part that's above. So 1 minus the square root of 6 over 10. And 1 plus the square root of 6 over 10. My graph is above. My graph is below in the middle. And my graph is above. So where is it greater than? Where is it above? Well, that would be from negative infinity up to 1 minus the square root of 6 over 10. Um, since it was greater than or equal to, we'd use a square bracket. And then from 1 plus the square root of 6 over 10 up to positive infinity. Um, on a number line, we could just color in since it's equal to and then shade above. Like that. Okay. Um, so the idea here is find the x-intercepts, um, and you may be able to do it by factoring, or you may have to use the quadratic formula. Um, 
And then once you know the x-intercepts, you're going to try to make a sketch of your graph and see where is it either, depending on what your inequality is, where is it above or where is it below. Uh, I want to show you one other thing you can do when your equation doesn't factor. Um, I'm trying to find a, a decent one here to try this with, though. Um, hmm. Let's do x squared plus 4x minus 7. And let's look at where is this greater than 0. Alright, so this thing is not going to factor, but another thing we can do if we don't like the quadratic formula is you can try to complete the square. Uh, so this is a good example to do that uh, because it has a 1 in front and this is even. Those are always good things to see. Uh, so recall that you take half of the middle number, half of the 4, and you square it. So we're going to add 4 and then take away 4. So then this part here will now factor as x plus 2, quantity squared, negative 7 and negative 4 be negative 11. Okay. So I want to um, find the x-intercepts here. So I'm going to change this from an inequality briefly into an equation and try to solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 11. And then take the square root of both sides. Remember that if you have a quadratic, it's going to have two solutions, one positive and one negative. So whenever you take the square root, you get a plus and a minus here. And that's really because of the square root of x plus 2 is the absolute value of x plus 2. In which that's why you have the two solutions. Um, and the last thing is to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, so we get solutions at negative 2 minus the square root of 11 and negative 2 plus the square root of 11. Um, so recall that the square root of 11 is approximately 3 point, I don't know, 3.4 ish, somewhere between 3 and 4, because the square root of 9 is exactly 3, and the square root of 16 is exactly 4. So the square root of 11 would be somewhere between those. So if you've got negative 2 minus 3.4, well, that's going to be like negative 5 something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, somewhere over here. And then if you've got negative 2 plus 3.4, well, that's 1.4. It'll be somewhere right in here. Um, so when you have uh, nicer numbers, you can kind of approximate if you want to get a better feel for what the graph is looking like. Um, and this graph is again going to open upward. Do something like this. So it's positive there, negative in the middle, positive there. All right. So we were looking for where is this greater than 0 at. In other words, where is it above? So notice it's just greater than this time, not equal to. So if you were doing that on a number line, negative 2 minus the square root of 11, negative 2 plus the square root of 11, well, strictly greater than, no equal to, would be open circles. And then the positives are on the end, so you're shading on the ends. Um, if you were going to write this in interval notation, negative infinity up to negative 2 minus the square root of 11. Again, open circles, you do parentheses. If it was a closed circle, you would do a square bracket. So your answer looks something like this. So number line version, interval notation version. Okay, so that's kind of a, a brief introduction into so uh, um, solving one variable inequalities. There's another way to do it that requires you to plug in numbers and make a sign chart, but it's just as easy to sketch the graph and do it that way. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, good luck.